All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of our supporters, wherever you are. Just really glad that you uh, joined us for our quarterly call. We wanted to give you some updates, and we also have a special guest today, uh, Yanni Cariola. Caliola. <laughs> I think I said that wrong. Good. Uh, he's going to give us um, some insights uh, based on a survey he just produced. Um, and we also have uh, Tim Lennon, who oversees our engineering team, and he is also going to be presenting today and giving you some updates about Drupal.org. So as we get started, um, let me just go ahead and put this into present mode so you can see my slides a little better. Uh, if you do have any questions as we go through uh, the slides today, just use the chat window. Uh, you'll find that at the bottom of your screen. And we are recording this, and so if there's anyone who uh, couldn't make it, we're gonna be sending this out, so um, your questions will be recorded. Just wanted to let you know. And if there's anything you heard that you like, you can go ahead and tweet using the Drupal Association handle. Uh, we'd love to always have you help us share our news. Uh, to, so today I'll just, like I said, go through the news uh, that's recent for the association. Tim will talk a little bit about Drupal.org give a quick summary of DrupalCon Dublin, which just happened, and then Yane will go over his uh, survey results. And of course, this is all about um, the supporter program, and we cannot do what we do, especially for Drupal.org, without your funding support. So thank you to our signature supporters, and our premium supporters, and our supporters. So many of you have been joining to help make all of our work happen. We also have our premium technology supporters, which are ISVs, technology that supports uh, Drupal. And then we have our hosting supporters as well at both the premium and the supporter level. All right, so let's go ahead into the news. Um, I talk a lot about the life cycle of open source and how it's made up of two journeys. The contribution journey, which is where people come in and contribute code and documentation so we can release the software. And I talk about the adoption journey, which is where an evaluator at an end user would um, come learn about Drupal, decide why it's right for their organization, connect with um, service providers, third-party technology, hosting companies, so they can create the right solution for themselves. And then... Um, you know, hopefully that they start to really believe in the ethos of open source and what they've uh, created with Drupal and they become a contributor themselves, kind of completing that life cycle. And the association really wants to strengthen these journeys and uh, we have unique ways that we can do this. It's, um, you know, these journeys are, are supported by the work that the association does in conjunction with what the community does. Um, you know, the community and the contribution side is always helping um, with mentors and the project maintainers and camp organizers, and the community is helping on the adoption journey side where um, businesses like Exove is, is going out there and finding out what's the right market and what are the um, needs of the businesses and providing the right tools and getting the, the um insights to them so that they can make the right decision with Drupal and, and build something amazing with Drupal. So, you know, we have that happening on a global basis and the association wants to partner with the community um, and by helping both sides of those journeys through Drupal.org and DrupalCon. And, and really what we're looking to do is just make sure those journeys are really easy to enter into and that we attract more into those journeys and that we make them a very smooth journey wherever we can help. Um, and then, of course, we want to reward certain um, uh, ways that you know, we need the contribution to be happening to move the project forward. Uh, so, you know, I just like to reiterate those kinds of journeys. It's kind of the new language that we're using to explain how we're helping open source and how we're helping Drupal thrive, and especially what we're, what we're focusing on. So that's kind of the frame that I use. I just want to give an update on some things that we're doing to support the contribution side. Uh, yesterday, we just announced um, on Drupal.org uh, front page news that we have assembled a technical advisory committee. And uh, it consists of uh, Angie Byron, Moshe Weitzman, and um, Steve Francia. Um, the first two are longtime community members, who I'm sure many of you know. And Steve Francia um, 
is on our board, has a technical open source leadership background, has worked with MongoDB and was the COO at Docker and is now at Google working with the Go team. Um, and the reason we created this committee was to help us and our engineering team really look at Drupal.org, understand that contribution journey and see how we can modernize it. We know that um, there's room for improvement. There's been a long time discussion within our community of uh, what we can do to improve our tools. Um, and so they're working with us to look at our, our existing tool set um, and compare what we could be doing there to fix it versus going with um, a partner, a GitHub, a GitLab, um, an Atlassian. And so we're starting this journey with them on assessing our needs, figuring out the right way forward, and it'll be collaborative with staff as well as with the community. So I just wanted to let you know what we're doing there, that uh, we'll be reaching out at some point for feedback, and I'll make sure you know when that happens. Uh, but I'm pretty excited that, um, that we're moving down this, down this quest, as I call it, because it will be a quest. It'll be a big overhaul when we uh, finally make a decision and, and do this work, uh, but it's going to have some really big impacts for the, for the project. And I think um, whichever direction we go, if we go with a vendor, I think we're going to be able to help them as well improve their tooling. Um, and that's going to help other big projects out there. Um, and so, you know, I think there's just a lot of really great things that are going to come out of this project. So I just wanted to let you know what we're doing there. And um, in case you missed Dries's blog, he and Matthew Tift um, have done a study of um, contribution credits, the issue credit system that we have on Drupal.org. If you don't know what that is, it is basically when anyone's contributing code, they can attribute it to themselves so we can recognize their work. Um, they can also attribute it to their, um, their employer. So maybe that's one of you as a service provider or an ISV or hosting company. And you can also attribute it to uh, a client. So uh, maybe you're doing this work on behalf of Pfizer, for example. And so we can study those attributions now for a good year. And, and what we found was 69% uh, of contributions are actually sponsored, which is a big, big shift from how the project started when it was a bunch of um, hobbyists that were playing with Drupal and contributing on their own time. So we, we now know that sponsored contribution is a pretty significant thing. Um, and it's something that's important to know. So as we look at the contribution and adoption journey, it just means that, you know, we, we have um, an an important part of our life cycle that's making things go around that we need to really understand. Um, we need to understand who's sponsoring and what's motivating them to support contributors uh, because we're going to need to really lean into that and help make more of that happen. And this slide is showing the top 30 organizations who are sponsoring contribution. Um, it's It's been really interesting to see how the issue credit system has um, not only helped bubble up this kind of insight to see who the top 30 are. Um, but it also, you know, just talking with them, it's been interesting to see about the this positive competition I mean, the, the, the issue credit reward systems actually changing behavior in a great way. So you see um, more companies wanting to step up and, and um, you make sure they are getting, a, you know, contribution work attributed to them. And one of the reasons is because then you get a higher ranking in the marketplace, and that's where evaluators go to find you. Um, and so when you look at the top 30 here, there's just some really interesting um, things that I wanted to point out, which is like diversity. I mean, it's globally diverse. Um, it's diverse in terms of who is sponsoring, uh, what kind of businesses. So you, know, you have your Drupal shops, your service providers, you have MD Systems in Switzerland, who's really not gigantic, um, very passionate, very focused. And um, so they're, as, a, as service providers goes, they're, they're leading in that area. Um, and you can see all kinds of different um, companies that are service providers in here, many that you know, that, are, that you know, some that are new. Like I just met Melody and DrupalCon Asia, and they're out of New York City. Um, 
And so that's just, you know, great representation within the Drupal shops. Um, I think it's also interesting that um, third party software providers are uh, being attributed as well um, in, in helping to support contributions. So we have Lingo Tech in here. And then, um, of course, Acquia, you know, their technology company with Lyft. Um, uh, and then if you look at the hosting companies, they're represented in here as well. Um, and so, you know, we just, this is the first time we've really had this insight. So the association's looking at a couple things, like how do we get more companies to help sponsor contribution, since we know it's such a big part of our, you know, contribution life cycle. Um, and then the second thing that we're looking at is um, how do we expand the issue credit system? Right now it's just tracking code contribution, but we know there's so many other kinds of contribution out there and many other kinds that we need. So um, this is one thing that Tim and I and the board are looking at right now. So looking at um, how do we give someone issue credits if they are supporting us financially as a supporter? Um, what about case studies? Right now, Drupal 8's been out for almost a year. We really need to get case studies out there so we can amplify that. Um, so how can we incent companies like yourself to start writing up your case studies and getting it on Drupal.org? And of course, there's so many other things that we can consider from camp organizers to mentoring. And um, so we're looking at all of those things and we'll have more updates soon. Uh, on the adoption journey side, we're doing um, several things there. I mean, the, I think the biggest thing we can do is start working on Drupal.org as a great marketing tool. Uh, that does a better job amplifying um, all of those success stories that I just mentioned and also connecting uh, evaluators to to you especially um, to help drive business. Uh, there's no one better position to answer customer questions than our Drupal shops or ISVs and hosting companies. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that we're working on, but I will let Tim go into more detail in his Drupal.org update. I do just want to point out that we are crowdsourcing Drupal 8 success stories right now um, for the for Drupal 8's one year birthday, which is coming up. Dries wants to do a blog post to get people really excited and rally around these different successes. So if you have anything that you can share, um, please you know uh, submit it through the form that Paul Johnson has sent around. Uh, we've emailed supporters this as well. Um, if you don't have time to go dig up that that link, then uh, just send it to me and I'll make sure it gets to Dries. So those are some things that we're doing uh, currently to improve the contribution and adoption journeys. Um, one other thing that we're working on is reassessing the supporter program benefits. We wanna make sure it's high value for you um, and uh, efficient, efficient use of your time and resources. We know that fulfilling all the benefits that we provide takes time and it can be um, challenging while you're running a business. Um, and we've talked with many Drupal shops and ISVs and hosting companies in this program and they have asked for uh, less benefits but more high value ones. So we're looking at what that could be. Um, they range from amplifying your success stories right on the front page of Drupal.org or if you have news, bubbling that up to the news section on the front page. Um, and then rewarding you with issue credit so that you have a higher ranking in the marketplace. Uh, so um, these are just some things that we're exploring right now and we'll be reaching out to get more feedback. And as we, um, you know, make sure that as soon as we know that this is what is valuable to you, we'll start making those changes in the new year. All right, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Tim. Awesome, sounds good. Um, so we have a lot of exciting things going on on Drupal.org and um, with the engineering team here at the association and the infrastructure that we work on. Um, and of course, the most visible changes you've already seen because the biggest thing that we did in the last quarter was this change to the front page itself. Um, so we developed some new editorial tools that the uh, content editors on our team can use to more easily update um, not just the front page, but landing page content throughout the site and give it a more um, highly designed, visually appealing look. Um, and we've also um, just done some work with the homepage to clean up the storytelling, um, uh, the information architecture, and to um, 
kind of better promote key information about the project. So obviously you've, you've already seen this, this new front page. It went live just before DrupalCon Dublin. Um, but just to give a couple of highlights, um, uh, we've cleaned up the news section a little bit here. Um, we've adjusted how the homepage sponsorship um, works uh, that is dis displayed on the site and uh, created something that fits better with the aesthetic and is better for um, kind of promoting related content. Um, uh, and we've highlighted DrupalCon um, in a more significant way on the homepage, DrupalCon being um, you know, the most significant opportunity for our community to come together and work together. Um, it needed a better pride of place on the site. Um, so what this means, besides just a, a kind of better look and feel for Drupal.org, is it means more editorial flexibility. Um, so if you advance to the next slide, Megan, um, we can much more easily create content um, uh, in, uh, like I said, a more designed, a more highly produced format uh, very quickly. And that means that we can use different, um, uh, different ways to promote success stories about Drupal 8 that come from uh, US partners, to promote um, exciting new technology coming in point releases of Drupal, um, and to promote kind of uh, time sensitive events in, in the life cycle of Drupal. Um, we can also use this to go beyond the homepage and create better highly produced content elsewhere on the site. Uh, so if you advance again, Megan, uh, we actually first used these new tools to build the membership campaign that you may have seen uh, live on Drupal.org uh, that features our community cultivation grants um, that are made possible by our members. Um, so it let us do some, some new storytelling um, uh, in, a, in a better way than we've been able to do before um, to uh, drive membership, to support community cultivation, and to um, you know, expand the camps that are happening around the world. Um, so that's one example uh, of, a, of a new thing that we're able to produce using these editorial tools that we've created, but we have other things coming up soon. Um, so Megan is going to advance again and show a couple mocks. Um, these are non-final mock-ups, but if you go to the next slide, this is uh, the beginning of rough mocking up of beginning to talk about Drupal in specific industries, talk about why Drupal is the tool that an evaluator needs to be the center of the digital experience they're trying to create, um, to talk about um, those key markets where Drupal is the, uh, is the logical solution um, and how those solutions are built. So not only can we build some more attractively designed landing pages, we can, if you advance again, um, just go slowly through the next uh, two or three slides, um, we can start building solution pages that are around specific industry specific vertical markets like higher education or government and we can promote third-party technology and distributions we can promote events occurring at DrupalCon like the summits um, and really start creating a conversation that's reflected both on Drupal.org and on DrupalCon about why Drupal is the powerful tool that it is and this is content that's been missing from Drupal.org for years and years and years it's been so focused on a volunteer and um, uh, and contributor, uh, the code contributor mindset that that we have really relied on service providers to to generate this sort of content before, um, but it's something that Drupal Drupal.org itself is, it's a story that we need to tell, um, and so of course we're going to be looking to um, partner with people who've created these success stories and um, uh, who create these kinds of technologies to help develop this content. So that's something that's that we're working on now, we've developed the tools, tools for, and it's, it's coming soon. We're, we're quite excited about it. Um, so if you keep going, Megan, and again. Um, so uh, in other news, this last quarter, of course, was the lead up to DrupalCon Dublin, and for the engineering team uh, at the association in particular, this means um, touching base with community contributors at Sprints um, and taking a look at uh, a lot of what's going on for the project in the community. Um, so uh, there were core releases, obviously 8.2 released, um, and uh, we are gonna start the cycle for the 8.3 release. Um, there's some issue credits, tweaks that we've done based on feedback from the community. Um, you know, that system has been so important, such a good incentive um, for organizations who are sponsoring contributors, and we need to carefully protect that system. So in addition to trying to find ways to reward, reward more kinds of contributions, we also want to make sure that it's, it's 
carefully controlled, it's providing good incentives, and it's not a system that people can gain. Um, so we're being very careful with it um, and making changes as needed. Um, composer support was added uh, to Drupal.org, actually not this, not Q3, but in Q2 in a alpha state, and then has been in beta throughout Q3. It's something that's now widely used by a large number of organizations to manage their Drupal sites, both Drupal 8 and Drupal 7. Um, it's the PHP workflow, um, uh, developer-oriented workflow for managing PHP projects, and we're really pleased that it's uh, so stable and doing so well. Um, we're also working on our infrastructure. Um, we're virtualizing elements of our infrastructure to make it uh, portable so that we can be flexible within our uh, data center at the open source lab, but also uh, in cloud hosting environments, and so that we can just be a little bit more flexible and agile with the um, with the infrastructure that we use to scaffold the project. And then finally, we've really been engaging with the community on a number of initiatives of their own, and I'm going to add a fourth one in here. So there's a few things that the community has been driving and that we've been supporting that are very um, very exciting in different ways. Uh, for one, there's a um, highly produced Drupal 8 user guide um, that has been closely cur curated with tight editorial control um, that Jennifer Hodgden has been largely working on to organize along with a number of other volunteers. Um, that is actually, uh, it's actually already deployed to Drupal.org and we're gonna be, begin linking it to other places, but it is something that's written with an editorial standard of an industry public publication. It's really powerful content um, and it uses a new kind of workflow um, that uh, unrelated to our previous documentation, so it's taken a little time to get it published, but it's very, very cool, and it's going to be great information for evaluators um, and new users to Drupal to encourage them uh, into how to get started with Drupal 8. There's also documentation migration in progress. Um, in really Q1 and Q2, we finished some new uh, tools for documentation, um, but there, of course, there's over 12,000 pages of documentation on Drupal.org, so the migration process is really critical, and that's volunteer-led. Um, so we've been finding new people to maintain the documentation on Drupal.org, to clean it up. Um, documentation is now versioned, so you don't find this mix of D6, D7, and D8 documentation all on a single page and have to kind of tease out the distinctions yourself. It's, it's all properly separate, separated by the, um, the major platform version. Um, and that's an ongoing process. We also are supporting some changes that will make the project application process easier, make it easier for new contributors to, um, uh, to contribute projects, to contribute their integrations with their third-party technology to Drupal.org. Um, it's a process that's been uh, kind of a long-running community pain point, and there's a lot of moving pieces, so it's, it's moving a little slow, but it's something that we've been working on with uh, community members who are passionate about it, and with that, we sprinted on a bit at Dublin. And then the fourth item that I'll just throw in here um, uh, that happened at Dublin and didn't make it onto the slides is just that Dreaditor is a tool that some of you may know of. It's a, it's a browser extension that many of our developers use. It's, it's been pretty critical to uh, Core's workflow. And features from that tool are now being ported directly into Drupal.org by the maintainer of that of the Dreaditor project. Um, and we're just supporting him and encouraging him and making sure that that happens in a way to help um, help keep the project moving while larger initiatives like the Technical Advisory Committee tooling exploration are ongoing. So, um, yeah, it's quite a lot, very exciting stuff, um, and more coming soon. That's great. Well, good work. I mean, it's amazing what your team's able to produce and as a guest in and out of the park, as they say. Thanks, ma'am. All right, well, Rachel Friesen wasn't able to join us today because she is in Baltimore getting uh, DrupalCon Baltimore ready. And so I just wanted to um, share a few things about DrupalCon Dublin on her behalf. Um, so it was a fantastic event that just happened that had just shy of 1,800 people uh, at the that attended. Um, you know, this is a really, great developer conference and um, it was our first time coming together after Drupal 8's release. There was really positive energy. The business community was there in full force and Yane from Exove is gonna talk a bit about that um, and uh, some of the things that they're seeing in Europe 
uh, as it relates to Drupal's growth and opportunities. Um, from a contribution standpoint, we had a really strong sprint and uh, lots of lots of newcomers that came in and learned how to sprint for the first time. DrupalCons are just a great way to bring in um, those newcomers and mentor them and show them how to be kind of one of us and contributing. Um, so it's just uh, just was a fantastic event. It has lots more details to come. Rachel's going to be working on a blog post that she'll uh, share out and. Um, We'll also make sure she has a chance to come and share some of those details uh, with all of you as um, as she's got them all compiled. She just needs a little bit of time to close out that event. Um, anyhow, uh, certainly great work by our local community in Ireland, as well as all the volunteers that help run the tracks and um, other special programming that make DrupalCon so special and magical. Um, getting lots of great feedback on the content. so. Big, big props to our volunteers. Okay, um, I am now going to um, stop sharing my screen. And so, Yanni, I'd like to hand it over to you so you can tell us a little bit about your survey and, um, and some of your findings. Thanks, Megan. Hopefully you all, all hear me well. So, the, uh, my name is Janne Kalliola. I'm the uh, CEO of Exove. And together with uh, Michel Van Welde, that is on holiday in, uh, in the Dutch islands with the bad, bad connectivity, he couldn't join the call. We had uh, Drupal CEO survey for the first time. So we uh, approached the CEOs of, of Drupal companies around the globe. Uh, the focus was in Europe because this was for the European DrupalCon. But we got so much answers from the, from the uh, other other continents too, so we, we ended up having a having a global global service. So really quickly, the I have like ten minute ten minute uh, agenda here. So let's go through the background and major findings, something about the companies and their projects, and then there is more background information or comments that I won't go through, but I'll share a link in the in the chat, and then uh, then Megan will shared with the with the people people uh, seeing the seeing the recording so you can go through the rest of the slides so there is like half of the presentation i don't go through now because it would be a bit boring so <clears throat> the show was open on uh, august september 2016 we got actually now it's like 82 responses but we have analyzed 75 first one of those and uh, the responses were from 35 different countries. The focus was mostly in Europe, so I would say like 20, 25 European countries out of 45, 50 that we have here in the, in the old continent. And then uh, US, India, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, quite a, quite a mixed bunch in a, in a good sense that the, uh, the, the coverage was good. The major findings we found were that the Drupal companies are growing, that all the focus areas of the companies are, are in growth. I'll, I'll go in the deeper a bit on that. Uh, the future is bright. Everybody's believing that, yes, yes, this is the thing that they want to do in the future too. Uh, but it must be said that the, uh, the Drupal 8 adoption has been slower than expected. And there are some reasons that I get get to that in later. And then it was also a bit surprising for us to find out that Drupal is widely, widely used together with other open source solutions, especially Node.js, React and Angular, so a lot of JavaScript stuff. Talk about companies, uh, the amount of services that the companies provide the focus area, most of the companies were of course doing web development, user experience, visual design support. And then uh, there is like a lot of other, all the, all the what we, what we ask for, all the, uh, all the advertising content creation hosting and so forth, got number of, number of uh, mentions. But the, uh, the takeaway from this slide is that the, the potential for big growth and maybe pivoting going some niches is not in support user experience visual development because we all are doing that. So then 
eye on the marketing, mobile development, service design, social media, something that fits your fits your company. I, I, I'm not the expert to say that where you should go because then everybody would go there and it, it would be like we do it all, all over again. So think about uh, diversifying your portfolio. On the industry served, there is the uh, charities and non-profit, uh, government, public, healthcare, and media are those ones that the most of the companies have clients. Uh, the Europe was really strong in banking and ins insurance, and the rest of the world was not. So for the people having companies outside Europe, maybe that's uh, an industry that you should, should uh, look at. There would be a lot of European European case studies of using Drupal in those industries. And for the Europeans, then the travel and tourism sec uh, sector is underserved by us compared to the, our global counterparts. And then there is a number of traditional uh, industries like clothing and fashion, construction, consultancy, electronics, energy, uh, sports, telecom, logistics, automotive, so forth, that are quite little, so, or served by a small amount of Drupal companies, so that might be a good, good area to grow into. If you want Hi, to. Hi, Yane. Um, I have a yeah. question that's coming in from the Q&A section. Of sure. our um, uh, C. Rooney asks, um, uh, I don't understand why you suggest, quote, no potential for big growth in support and web dev. Is it just because you think it's saturated by all other agencies doing it? What if the entire pie is growing for everyone? Yeah, but the other, uh, the, the IT pie, that's a good question. The IT pie, the, the, the sort of uh, software development or, or web services pie is growing. If you go back to the slides, so the, uh, if you grow here, then I would say that the, uh, if you can sustain your growth on er other areas too, on the same pace that you would do in web development, uh, you probably could actually grow faster later in the web development area because the others, especially advertising, uh, marketing, service design, social media, marketing slash consulting, they all feed in the web development that happens after visual design or user experience and then support follows. So there's certain parts that, 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 that we are at the end of the sort of uh, value chain. So those are at the end and there's a lot of things that would happen before that. So I would go there, not just because there is less competition in Drupal world there, that, that's one thing. And then the other one is that these services feed web development and the, and the others that we are strong already. So we should go upstream in the value chain, if that makes any sense. Then uh, for the uh, looking inside the company, what are the top priorities for the next three years? The, uh, as, as mentioned, the people, the companies have been growing, so we have also numbers how how the company have grown in headcount, but I, I don't I don't go them through here, but the the, the trend is that they, yes, we all are growing. Uh, and the focus areas for the for the management are developing new growth, ensuring financial growth and finding the right talent. And then if you look at the uh, major challenges, this is exactly the same, same, same uh, same topics here, the talent retention is higher compared to the, to the focus area. So the, uh, we struggle with the finding the right talent, especially in, in Europe, and then we have issues with reten retending that talent, but it's not the top priority for us. And that's something that uh, uh, most of the companies are now growing in a, in a size that we are companies of 50 people, 100 people, 200 people, 400 people. And then we are more like any other company that the, the, the open source spirit most probably is, 
is not that strong anymore with all the people that come in the company that they just come a mid-sized company mid-sized IT company so the uh, the the community stuff is not the only way to do talent retention that it sort of have been with the, with the companies that have been discussing with that yeah we we let the people go to go to DrupalCon, we let them to contribute and so forth but there will be more and more people that don't really care about those things when your company grows so you need to focus on a great place to work service or something that that you can actually measure your success with the, being a good employer and keeping the uh, talent retention in, uh, in, in control talking about projects the uh, this is the this is the uh, slide that makes me makes me sad. Uh, the typical budgets for the for the Drupal Drupal sites. There was a number of companies that uh, produce a marketing site with less less than 10k, and uh, I guess that almost half of the companies produce it less than 30k. And uh, if we talk about enterprise solutions, there are some companies that do less than 10k enterprise solutions. It might be that some people have not really understood what, what the enterprise means, or then they just underprice themselves very, very, very heavily. And then if you look at the other end, that is like half a million, one million euro or dollar case. This was not. This didn't have. If I remember correctly, this didn't have the uh, the currency, so it's uh, pounds or USD or euros. You you pick any any of those those currencies that are almost on the par anyhow. These are still very inexpensive enterprise solutions. We have been in a discussion with our enterprise clients that they say that if we, if we, if we change SAP, we don't implement SAP. But if we change SAP, it will cost us one million euro roughly so we don't change sap but we do something else around it so those are the budgets people are people are used uh, i heard uh, uh, from re really reliable source i heard that the, uh, there's been cases that the that the sanctions in the enterprise deployment have been like 10 million euro so we price ourselves really low that might be because the uh, we are not known in the, com in the in the enterprise world. We are we are unsure about ourselves whether we are worth of it, or that the Drupal has in in your market has has a still sort of open source hobbyist image instead of a, a, a truly enterprise solution that that com that is comparable with Adobe and Sidecore, the current leaders in the, in the enterprise CMS. Can I just ask a quick question, Yane? Sure. For the, um, you know, when you talk about how we have, we're kind of underpricing our, our services, when you break this out regionally, do you see a difference? Like, um, for example, I know, you know, there's near, what do you call it, near shore and mm -hmm. offshore type of services. I'm just wondering if they are, you know, if you broke them out, if they happen to have, lower price points than say what uh, the agency in Europe or the US might have? Uh, we didn't break it out. Uh, I would think that the, uh, if you do, if you do nearshoring uh, or go to Eastern Europe, for example, in, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe or South America from North America, the prices will be like half or one third of the, of the prices of the, of the uh, more expensive countries. So it's still, doesn't change the picture that the uh, that the um, uh, enterprise solution with less than 10k or uh, 30k or 50k mm -hmm. that that's really cheap still so the uh, i don't have the data here so i i don't want to want to guess too much uh but the uh, still the still e even if that would be taken into account the prices are are very low but i would say that the those those companies on the on the left are typically small companies, five people or something like that, and then probably more on those areas there where the where the development is, is cheaper. But still, even them they could get more money out of the work if, if things would be done done properly. Uh, and that comes to the 
last last slide that the uh, my my and, and Michelle's advice is that the uh, that the Drupal is so great system and so great platform and it's it's uh, in several senses it's comparable to the uh, to the uh, enterprise CMS enterprise enterprise platforms. So we need to all of the companies need to figure out that what 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 are the sweet spot where where to go specialize somewhat pick the right battles and assess the pricing while you go if you want to grow you need cash and uh, for getting more cash out of your work you need to raise your prices but you can't raise your prices if your if the value is not visible to your clients so that's why you need to develop the markets you need to grow the demand and you need to contribute to Drupal success also outside coding. So it's not just that contributing contributing code back is the, is the what what was already discussed is this core that that's that that's really cool thing. But I would say that contributing marketing, contributing UX, contributing case studies would have bigger impact because Drupal eight is mostly ready, usable, and so forth. But we just need to make it make it uh, success big time. If you have in your company you have uh, user experience people, uh, try to get them to contribute back to the uh, back to the uh, community. I know that the uh, the Drupal discuss a way of doing things might not be the easiest for for the UX designers because they are not used to that kind of back and forth discussion, but they, 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 and, and with the design, you can, you can have endless discussions with what is good and what's not, and whether somebody just could implement it and so forth without designing. So all of that aside, you need to brace them, them somewhat that they, that they can, they can sustain the, uh, the very technical oriented community, but we need to do something on that front. The Drupal, is in a really good position compared to Adobe, Sidecore, and the other enterprise systems if we get the UX right. And it's not right now. So we need to do something about it. It's getting better. Dries showed a cool stuff on the, on the Dries note on 8.2. And I actually discussed with one of the, one of the user experience guys that, that were part of that, that process. So it can be done, but it's something that should be done, and it should be done with the more rigorous approach that now. So if you have a UX resources, then go to talk to them whether they would be interested in contributing back with the user experience. And then last, but not least, definitely not least, is that we need to focus on sales. I discussed with a number of people in the Drupalcon Dublin and their sales strategy was, like it was exo sales strategy like a few years ago, that you aggressively wait the phone rings, then you answer the phone, and then you sell something what the customer wants. That is not enough anymore. When you when your company is bigger, you need to do something. You need to have active sales. You need to grow the market, develop the market, and then get more customers, better clients with deeper pockets, and hopefully also that kind of project that you could contribute back something back to the community. But there is a huge amount of money available right now. And I would say that it belongs to us because we are on the good side of things. We are working with the open source that has all the benefits for the clients. So the, uh, we just need to need to get get our things together, sell more, and the world is a bit greater place to work. That's all that I got. Thanks. That's great, Yanni. Thank you so much for doing the, the research and pushing the survey out. I'm really glad we could partner on this. And I certainly hope we can do it again and work with other supporters to find out what kind of information they're looking for and, and, and keep this going year after year. Yeah, that, that's the plan. And uh, I just put on the chat the, the link to the, link to the uh, slides that has the CEO comments. Go read them. They are quite, quite... Uh, some of them are eye-opening, some you don't really understand or disagree, but uh, talk, with, talk about those in your organization. And there's also background information about the countries and so forth. So the, uh, 
enjoy enjoy the results. That's great. And I'll make sure to share all that information out when we share the recording with all the supporters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I just want to say thanks for being such a great partner. Um, Exove, Exove really kind of um, walks the talk. So when Yane says, you know, it's, it's about contributing back and all the different ways to do that and why that's important for your business. Exove has been doing that quite a bit on, on many fronts and I can always count on Yane when we need that extra support. So just want a big thank you to you, Yane. Thanks. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, that concludes our quarterly update for our supporters. And um, Megan, I have a couple questions. Oh, right. Of course. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go through it and just um, so just one follow up. Um, first, uh, earlier, uh, C. Rooney had asked, why do you suggest no potential for big growth? And you'd summarize that that growth of larger pie is possible, but focusing on by but by focusing on some of the underserved markets upstream that'll feed the growth of that traditional web development market um he agreed with that and just also said that he'd also argue that there are also non-drupal agencies that are in those upstream services that might be trying to get downstream into drupal and web development it was just an insight that i thought i would share back with the rest of the people listening on the call yeah that, that's that's happening I, I can say that there are there's more interest in in drupal in the in the other agencies and so forth so the, uh, keep your eyes open while you do business. Yeah, and there's... Oh, if I can just say one thing. As these non-Drupal agencies are looking to Drupal, does that drive more partnership opportunities and mergers and acquisitions? Uh, I mean, C. Rooney's other comment there specifically was, this is part of what drives the consolidation trend. So certainly that seems to be, I think, um, part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Eric Robbins also asks, um, specifically about DrupalCon Baltimore, uh, quote, we're budgeting for 2017 conferences and wondered in particular about add-ons like summits and trainings. Is the pricing going to be roughly the same as last year? Are there new summits on the horizon? The government summit was a great addition last year. Not sure if there's anything else you're looking at. Yeah, uh, I, can, I can definitely speak to that. In terms of pricing, well, first of all, I'm glad you want to go. Thanks for putting your budget so, so early in the year. Um, we're always mindful of the Pricing, um, if there are any changes, um, it won't be draconian. It won't be like a typical conference that's suddenly $1,000. Um, but Because we do know that, especially agencies, just taking your team off the bench to go to a conference costs your company money. So um, I'll have more news. We'll be launching ticket sales in December. Um, but you can generally base it off of last year's numbers. There, there might be an increase in a few areas, um, possibly in the summits. Um, and so in terms of content, we're working on that content now. Uh, we're gathering the track chairs and, and having those discussions. Um, Amanda Gonzer might, you know, shoot me after this for, for talking about things that aren't totally fully cemented yet, but we are looking at some content changes. Um, you know, I think we have the right track, so we always have the, the coding track and the project manager track and the business track and you know, lot, lots of things are the same. There's some things that we want to do. We want to have some stronger case studies. So Drupal 8's been out for a year. So we're really looking for a strong case study um, track that we can really amplify some amazing stories and get the end users to come out and talking with their, with their service provider about how Drupal's transformed their business. Um, and um, we, we want to do that for two reasons. One, like we just want everyone to understand that this is happening, that Drupal 8 is being adopted in a big way. And um, it can also be great sales tools for all of you to go back and reference these accounts and, and learn from them. Um, the, the second thing we want to do is expose these case studies and, and let end users know out there, this is great content for you. You should come and hear what your peers are doing. Um, I did a lot of research this summer talking to many, many, many customers, um, asking like, what would it take to get you to come to, to DrupalCon? And when I say customers, I'm talking about the CTOs and the director of engineering. How do we get more of them to come to DrupalCon? And they said, I want to hear about how I can push the envelope with Drupal and have a bigger impact for my business. And I want to meet my peers. Um, I just don't have time for a lot of networking. And so we are definitely trying to make sure we do our outreach to these kinds of um, this, this audience, we let them know we have the content you're looking for. And we're even looking to do some peer-to-peer -peer networking opportunities for that audience. Um, 
and so that's that's one thing that we're doing. Um, some other things that we're doing is uh, for the business community. Um, well, we have the business summit every year, and it's great for that um, small, medium-sized business that's generally new, uh, like maybe I'd say like in the earlier stages of forming as a business. Um, they get into a room with masters in, in Drupal business. So someone like Yane's in there, you might have Jeff Walpole from phase two, and they help facilitate discussions to um, you know, help you as a business get stronger. And so we'll continue to have that, but we want to start creating what I call the escalator to business mastery. And we need to start having um, programs that serve different kinds of the businesses in our community, whether it's maturity or size. And so we are looking at um, another kind of summit um, kind of program, not quite sure exactly what it'll look like, but something for those that are a little bit more uh, mature, have been around a little bit longer, or, need, or maybe they're a different size, and they need to have a different kind of discussion. Um, and so we're looking into, into something for that niche on the business side. Um, of course, um, businesses are always looking to sponsor and, and get in front of um, their audience or just to get back to the community through the sponsorship. So we're looking at different kinds of sponsor packages um, and we're always open to new ideas. So that's one thing we can always talk about. Um, and as for summits, yes, we are definitely doing the summits. I think it's one thing that we're really strong at and you know, I have to give the credit to the community because they created summits. Um, and then we've adopted that as part of the DrupalCon programming. So <clears throat> we will have higher ed again. It has sold out every year like within a week. Um, so we are looking to expand that so we can get more people in. Um, we're looking to even strengthen some of the content in these summits so that it's not just roundtable discussions amongst peers, but also more case studies so we can learn from each other. Um, so we'll be doing that. We will be bringing government back. I mean, we will be kind of the doorsteps, doorsteps of federal government and um, wouldn't, you know, it just makes sense to have a government summit that was really popular, so we want to bring that back. Uh, the media summit was really strong last year. It was the first time we had that, and so we're looking to bring that back again. Um, and we're looking into a few other new ones. Um, one that we're exploring is nonprofit. It's, it's obviously a strong base within um, Drupal. It would make a lot of sense. There's tons of associations in the greater D.C. area, um, so they would easily be able to make it to Baltimore. Um, assuming they can, you know, get off work. Um, the other thing is that being on the East Coast puts us in what we call the pharma belt, the farm belt, P-H-A-R-M. Um, and uh, that's all the pharmaceutical, medical devices, healthcare, uh, that ranges from basically New York City down to D.C. Um, you know, so you have your Johnson's and Johnson's and, um, gosh, uh, you know, Pfizer and, um, AstraZeneca, I think there's still, I think there's been so many mergers. I used to be in this sector, so I used to be able to rattle these off so much faster. Anyhow, we are thinking of having a track for that, for that part of the industry too. Um, so we're just kind of exploring what would make the most sense given capacity and, and the space that we have. Um, you know, I think Yane brought up a good point that maybe we're missing opportunities in banking. Um, maybe there's not enough, mm, Maybe there's not enough energy there yet to have a summit around banking, but it certainly brings up something for me to consider in the future. Um, uh, I do know that Dries just announced uh, a really big Drupal 8 win with NASDAQ. Um, so there are things happening there in, in, you know, in the U.S. on the East Coast um, around finance. Um, and so it's something for me to consider. So hopefully that answers your questions about Baltimore, but um, thanks again for your interest in it and getting it into your budget now. Any other questions? Looks like that's everything. Okay, great. All right, well now that does officially conclude our uh, Q4 supporter webcast. And again, just thank you so much for all of the support. Um, all of this funding from the supporter program helps make Drupal.org improvements happen. And, and we're really excited to start improving the front page to make it more of a marketing and sales tool for you. And we're gonna start expanding out those industry specific pages. So I just want you to make sure you see how your money is, is going back into to supporting you as well, because we're all in this together. So um, with that, thank you and good luck with the rest of your year. <laughs>